Hello everyone and welcome to our Wednesday evening devotional. This is Mike McDaniel, the evangelist of the Central Church of Christ in Crothersville, Missouri. We hope that you are well and doing good today. We want to remind you of our gospel meeting July the 30th through August the 1st. Our theme is Authentic Christianity. We have, we're going to have with us uh, some great men. Alan Webster, uh, Justin Beard from Union City, Tennessee, Michael Clark from Memphis, and Caleb Colley from Jackson, Tennessee. So we've got three of the four who've never been here. So you don't know what to expect, but I can tell you that you can expect a spiritual feast. This is going to be tremendous. Just tremendous. And people out in the area are talking about it, talking it up. And I think they're going to be coming and visiting us. We want you to be inviting people to come to our gospel meeting. Remember, all nights, including Sunday night, will be at 7 o'clock. So pray for the speakers. Pray for our meeting. Invite other people to come. Today is the second part of our lesson on women's role in today's worship. Back in January of 1990, the Cahaba Valley Church of Christ in Birmingham, Alabama, sent a letter to its members sending forth their view of the role of women in the church. They stated, We further assert that women in the Lord may minister not only to women, but also to men, as God calls them as long as they are submitting to God's authority, the leaders of the church, and their commitments to their families. They also announce that they will appoint deacons for this church on Pentecost Sunday, 1990. Deacons will be male and female. Well, by 1994, they indicated that women will also be speaking to the assembly in sermon. Such instances as that reminds us of the need to teach what the Bible says on the role of women in today's worship. Last week we studied how Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. She was deceived by the devil and took upon herself an unauthorized leadership. Adam was not deceived, but he sinned in two ways in allowing Eve to take into herself an unauthorized leadership role and putting himself in an unauthorized fellowship role. When God declared their punishment for sin, he said to Eve, Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Genesis 3.16 Ephesians 5.22-24 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as, in, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject unto their own husbands in everything. This passage makes clear that in the home, the husband is to be the head of the wife. And as the church occupies a role of subjection to Jesus, just so the wife occupies a role of subjection to her husband. It is important to understand that subjection does not mean inferiority. In 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 2, Paul stresses the divine chain of authority. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. The chain is God, Christ, man, woman. In 1 Corinthians 14, 34, Let your women learn, uh, keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14 discusses miraculous gifts in the early church. Uh, there were meetings in which these miraculous gifts were exercised like the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, or the gift of prophecy. And in these meetings there were present prophets and their wives. 
Now, while we do not have meetings exactly like this today, there are some principles set forth in this chapter which are applicable to us, such as, let all things be done unedifying. God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Let them be in subjection, as also saith the law, and let all things be done decently and in order. In this kind of meeting, the women were to keep silent. To exercise gifts of teaching in a mixed worship assembly would be to violate the subjection principle. Again, 1 Timothy 2.11 says, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Women are to be silent in a mixed worship assembly when the subjection principle demands it. For example, in our regular worship assembly, women are to sing. Every child of God is so commanded, Ephesians 5.19. And when she sings, she speaks. And when she speaks, when she sings, she teaches. And this in the assembly. In our assemblies, women are encouraged to publicly confess their faith in Christ before they are baptized and to confess their sins that they might be restored. Such speech is authorized, and it does not violate the subjection principle. But what are some occasions in which this principle would be violated? Well, as we said last week, whenever a new area of service or leadership is considered for women, the question ought to be asked, does this violate any teaching from the Bible? Let me ask that question relative to several specific areas. Uh, women preachers. May a woman preach today in, the, in a mixed assembly? No, she may not. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. First Timothy 2 and verse 2. That is a particular reference in that text to conduct in public worship. The Greek word teach also includes preaching. That passage forbids the exercise of authority over the man in religious matters. But Titus 2.15 says preachers are to speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Therefore, women cannot be preachers. Women are commanded to teach in Titus 2.3, but they are forbidden to teach or preach in a way that would involve taking the lead or exercising authority over the man. Such violates the principle of subjection. Now suppose the elders ask a woman to preach. Would she then be usurping authority? Well, the answer is yes. One must realize that the taking to oneself of an authority which God has not given whether with or without the consent of elders, is always sinful. Usurp there actually is better translated uh, to be in a position of authority or to have authority over the man. And then women's song leaders or prayer leaders. Again, 1 Timothy 2.12 forbids usurping authority or having authority over the man. Again, some mistakenly assume that usurping means uh, taking by force, but it doesn't. It simply means having authority. To have authority is to be in a position of authority. That passage forbids that which places a woman in a position of authority over a man religiously. And because there's a certain degree of authority over or in song leaders and prayer leaders, Women may not take these leadership roles and comply fully with God's word. Someone asks, what about serving on the Lord's table? The argument is made that by waiting on the Lord's table, the woman is serving and not leading. However, even if the woman did not offer the prayer, she's perceived, uh, at least here in America, as a leader in the worship. It isn't uncommon, you know, in church buildings to see major headings such as those privileged to lead in our worship. And then beneath that heading, you find a list including those who are 
waiting on the Lord's table. Those who stand and have an active role before an audience are commonly considered in our culture as leaders in almost any assembly. So the perception of leading would make a Christian woman avoid this practice. Someone asked about uh, chain prayers. The problem with chain prayers of men and women together is that when the woman is leading the prayer, she has authority over all the others and cannot be interrupted. That would put her in a position of authority over the man, which the Bible forbids. Someone asked, what about reading scripture? It would be wrong for a woman to have the scripture reading in a public worship assembly of a mixed audience because such implies a position of authority in violation of 1 Timothy 2 and verse 12. Such would be different, however, in a Bible class setting because the reader operates under the authority of the teacher. While in the public assembly, the reader does not operate under the direct position of authority of anyone else but himself. In the Bible class setting, when a woman reads scripture, when she asks a question, when she makes a comment, she is not taking a position of authority in the class when she does that. Rather, she is operating under the teacher's position of authority. In like manner during our worship periods, women teach as they sing, Ephesians 5.19. Yet they are operating under the position of authority of the song leader. And I see that as similar. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And we'll continue some more thoughts about woman's role in today's worship next week, Lord willing. Till next time, this is Mike McDaniel. Have a good day.